Previously, we made our penguin feeding app interactive by adding on-tap handlers to each list item. When someone taps on, say, the rockhopper penguin, it causes an inline lambda to be invoked, which calls the handle penguin tap method with the string rockhopper penguin. In the process of adding tap handlers, we've introduced some duplication. Each list entry now has the name of the penguin twice, once for the title and once for the tap handler argument. Let's dry this up by introducing a new feeding option type. We'll give it a string name field. While we're at it, we'll also encapsulate the other bit of penguin-specific information in this structure, the penguin's image. And we'll provide a constructor that simply initializes both of these attributes from arguments. Let's instantiate a feeding option for one of our penguin species. And let's populate one of the list tiles from this new object. We can now reuse the name field instead of repeating the same string literal twice. Let's make sure we haven't broken anything. Okay, looks good. Now let's go ahead and make objects for the other two penguin types. And fill in their respective list tiles with the object field references instead of literals. Now that we've extracted the details of a feeding option into a class, does it still make sense to pass the raw penguin name into the handle penguin tap method? Maybe it would be better if we passed the whole feeding option object along and let the tap handler decide what information it needs. And we'll update the list code to pass whole feeding options along to the tap handler method. The code to build up each list tile is starting to look quite similar and formulaic. Let's pull it out into a builder method, which will take a feeding option and return a list tile widget for it. Now we can replace our repetitive list construction code with a list of our penguins mapped through the build penguin item method and converted back to a list. Since we've come this far, let's go one more step and put our penguins into a list as soon as we instantiate them. Then we'll use that list in building our list view. Let's check one more time that our tap handler is still working as intended. Yep, looks good. In this video, we haven't introduced any new functionality, but we've refactored the code to get it into a good place for our next round of enhancements. See you soon.